Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today we're gonna to be talking about tents. So I have three rooftop tents here that are all kind of representative of some of the main types of rooftop tents on the market. Now, I've been having fun with rooftop tents for a few years now. I don't know, kind of, I'm not an expert, but uh, I've tried a bunch of them. So this is on a Jeep Gladiator from RMT that I'm borrowing. Um, just got back from camping, so I had opened it up to air dry and I was like, why don't I just make a rooftop tent comparison? This one is a GFC, Go Fast Campers rooftop tent. And over here is an iCamper SkyCamp Mini. So this is the tent you see probably in, in most of my Weekender Landers. And then this one, and then this. So this video is gonna be not a review of any specific tent, but I'll kind of show you the features of the different kinds and kind of talk about the pros and cons of each. So it's gonna be just kind of a walk around, kind of a little bit rambling or whatever, but I hope it's helpful as you start shopping or getting into rooftop tents. So this one over here is from Rome Adventure Company, and it's pretty indicative of the majority of rooftop tents on the market. Now, an industry secret that probably most of these tent manufacturers don't want me to talk about is most of these tents are made out of the same one or two or three factories in China. They're all pretty much the same. Now this is the tent that you kind of see, it's your typical canvas cover, black canvas cover, folds out, the whole top is all fabric. Uh, so you know, a bunch of brands make the CVT, Tapui, Yakima, Rome, pretty much everyone makes a tent like that. Now this one is from GFC. This is what people will call a wedge tent, wedge rooftop tent for obvious reasons. It's a wedge. Uh, so these are kind of that. They have some that kind of wedge up the other way, but they all kind of basically get the same job done in that they are the quickest to set up by far. Uh, and the sleeping area is basically the same footprint as the tent when it's closed. Now this one is from iCamper. It's called a Sky Camp and this is the mini version, and it is shorter. So it fits on, this is a short bed, five foot bed Tacoma. So this part is a hard shell on that, and it folds open to kind of, you know, roughly double the floor square footage of the sleeping area versus the footprint when it's closed. So these are the three main styles of rooftop tents. Now there's, you know, some other fringe ones that are, you know, electronic up and down, and there's different variations of kind of the wedge. And there's different, a bunch of different sizes, and these ones come with a couple of different features, but for the most part, they're all gonna be the same. And iCamper really, this is, up until about six months ago, was the only tent of its type, because iCamper uh, kind of is pretty ingenuitive. I like that. So they brought this to market and then a bunch of companies kind of copied their design. So now there's, now there's others that are like this, but iCamper came up with the design. So these tents have historically been the cheapest. Uh, they are made again by a bunch of companies, Front Runner, Rome, CVT, Tapui. Hey guys, quick interjection right here because we're kind of talking about budget tents and the benefits of that if you're on a budget, obviously, don't spend more than you can afford on a tent. But there's a new option from GFC actually called the Superlight. This is not the Superlight. It's a new tent. Uh, it's available for pre-order right now and it's super light. It weighs 80 pounds, which makes it one of the lightest tents on the market. And it's kind of interesting in some unique ways in that it opens like a wedge like this and it has hard panels in it, but it's kind of in a bag, so to speak. So the setup is not quite as fast as this, unfortunately, but it's only 1200 bucks. It starts at 1200 bucks and it's kind of modular in several ways. You get it at 1200 bucks, say you have a, a hatch ladder and you don't need the ladder, $1200 doesn't come with the ladder, but you can add the ladder on if you want. 1200 bucks, interestingly enough, also doesn't come with a mattress. You can add the mattress on, don't worry, but if you have just like camping pads that you like or if you have a memory phone mattress that you like, then you don't need to pay for the mattress. But Obviously, if you want the mattress, you can get it. The other interesting thing is it's only five inches when completely compressed, but it can expand. 
So you can put your pillows and your bedding in there and you can put other stuff. They don't really advertise it for other stuff, but you can store other flat stuff in there. So it kind of turns your rooftop tent into a bagged storage area, but it still has a flat panel on the top. So it's not gonna be like bulbous. It has a rigid honeycomb panel on the top. You can adjust the straps to let it hold a little more, which is really interesting in my mind. So it's cheap, it's wedge, it's super light so you can take it off and on really easy, not heavy like a lot of these other rooftop tents, and you can kind of keep stuff in it. And it's also modular in that you can replace the any of the components basically, so if you're intending on keeping it for a long time but it wears out eventually, you can replace just that piece that, that wore out. Anyways, cool product, just wanted to highlight it real quick. And while the GFC, the premium tent, which is expensive, $4,000, is made in the US, like legit, everything made in the US. The super light, a lot of the pieces are made in the US and it's assembled in the US and shipped from the US, but the fabrics are sourced overseas and that's how they keep that cost so low. So just heads up on that. Um, and then I, was, I just got off the phone with Graham over at GFC and I said, can we do something cool for my, my followers? I, I work with companies to get coupon codes and stuff. So we got not a coupon code because their margins are pretty slim right now. But we got a code, and I think it's kind of cool. If you enter LLOD at checkout on any of the GFC tents or campers, you get a free hat. It's not, you know, it's not a big thing, but you get a free hat. But we're working on like an exclusive hat, so it's probably going to be like an OD hat with a black GFC patch. We got to work out the details. But enter code LLOD at checkout, you get a free hat. So yeah, if you're interested in that, you get an exclusive, get an exclusive hat. All right. Back to the rest of the video. And they're all basically the same. This is it in open mode. This is a rain fly, so I can pop this up and kind of have a, have a canopy like that, but I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. This one has this little annex room kind of. So most of these tents, you can buy a separate annex room that'll zipper into that upper portion and basically make a little room that'll be like around the tent. So you can have this as kind of a lower quarters for your animals or whatever, but I've never used one. That's just waste way too much work setting up for me. Uh, the idea for rooftop tents for me is always mobility and ease of use and setup. So I've never, I, I don't care to make a whole annex room, but if, if whatever you want to use one of those and you know, you have a good use for it, then that's an option. I don't like these ones that have this, this overhang here above the ladder because this is another piece, it's more weight, it's more material, it's more stuff to flap around in the wind. And technically, when this is out, you're supposed to grab a guy line and peg it to the ground so this isn't just flopping away. The wind will blow this up and just close it on itself and uh, I, don't, I don't like messing with them. But some people do. So the general idea, is you'll have a ladder that'll drop out like this and then you'll get up into the tent. So this is the inside of most of your kind of standard canvas rooftop tents. Sometimes they'll have little skylights that you can unzip and they'll typically have windows on all four sides. This one has some little bungees that you take off when you're actually using the tent, but these basically help pull in the sides when you're closing the tent up. So this is it, it'll have basically it's basically a symmetrical design, so that side is the same as this side when it folds out. We'll have about the same width on both sides. And again, these things come in all kinds of different sizes. The mattresses on them are usually pretty good though. So, and some of these, depending on the model, you can keep your sleeping bag and your pillow and stuff in there. Though this one would be pretty tight. I don't think you could keep your pillows in here, but maybe like a down, down sleeping bag, down comforter could fit in here without many problems. And then you have your tent poles. So most of the time you don't need to necessarily use these, but obviously you can pop these out as I'll show you over here. And so you kind of have a, a rain awning and lets you get a little more ventilation in here. So the pros of these is typically they're the cheapest, though GFC actually just released a new model of tent that is really cheap. Um, so, but historically these have been the cheapest tents and everyone's making them and you can get them in a variety of sizes. Uh, so you can get these really big to where they're like a king size mattress 
And that's nice, though you can also get a Sky Camp full size, which is about the size of a King mattress as well. So the main pros in my eyes for these ones are that they can be had for cheaper, typically. A bunch of cons though, a bunch of cons for these. As you can see, it's all just canvas flapping around in the wind. So these tents are gonna be the loudest when it comes to wind noise. Um, and they're gonna take by far the most time to set up. So you're looking at to take the canvas thing off and unbuckle all the buckles and fold it out and do everything. You're looking at five to 10 minutes set up here with a similar takedown time. Now five to 10 minutes doesn't seem too crazy, but if you live in anywhere that sees weather, cold weather, rain, snow, wind, uh, that five to 10 minutes sucks. And trying to manipulate the zipper to close it up when you're done or to open it, especially when it's snowing and freezing out with numb fingers is, well, it's a nightmare. I hate it. <laughs> I really don't like these kind of tents. And that's personal preference after having used all of them. I'm not trying to talk about specific brands, though I obviously have specific brands here. So not a dig at Rome at all. I just don't like these canvas tents. Then we have the wedge tent here. This one is a GFC. It's what I have. They, they sent it to me. GFC is a cool company. So one of the few tents that is actually made in America with American sourced materials. Uh, and they're based in Montana. So on this tent specifically, made in America, which is awesome. It's also the lowest profile tent on the market at six inches tall. These are gonna be around a foot typically, but they, again, they vary in sizes, but this is the most low profile tent on the market. Also, depending on your vehicle, they do sell direct mount brackets, which makes you not need to have a roof rack at all. And actually, as you can see these channels, you can mount accessories. Like I have this light here, I have max tracks and a shovel on the other side, and you can put crossbars on the top. So this kind of tent functionally depending on your vehicle, you don't even need a roof rack. And then this now becomes a roof rack. So this has gas struts that'll lift it up and I don't have the crossbars on right now, but I think it can lift up about 75 pounds. So if you had like a kayak or some other stuff on the top, on some crossbars, you could do that. Also, as you can see, I have a solar panel on the top, which is nice that you can mount some of that stuff to this tent. And then over here, I have a shovel a DMOS, and then Max Tracks mounted to the side. So kind of a cool tent in that you can mount some stuff to it and kind of use it functionally like a roof rack. So now this is taking up the whole roof of your vehicle, but you don't necessarily lose the functionality of being able to store stuff up there still. Now, GFC did not invent the wedge wedge tent by any means. So some of those features, you know, the extrusions and using it as a roof rack is obviously awesome and kind of unique to the wedge shaped campers. Uh, GFC is probably the most, you know, functionally equipped with the direct mount and all kinds of accessories you can add to it. Uh, so you have that pro and another pro is obviously how quick it is to set up. So this will take about 10 seconds, literally to set up, so cold fingers, bad weather, no worries. Pop it up, close it down. Uh, the close down takes probably about 20 seconds, so very simple to close up, which is a huge benefit of this. Another benefit is how low profile it sits on top of your roof. Uh, the only real con is these are usually pretty expensive, uh, and you need a lot of roof space. So if you wanna do kind of this mid height bed rack system where the tent is only taking up that space from here to here, you can't do it. You'd need a full height rack and the GFC would have to extend along the top. So it would come, if the back was about there, the front would come to probably something like there for the GFC. So you couldn't do it with this low profile, low bed rack system with a wedge tent. And the other con is that since it just pops straight up, your sleeping platform is just the square footage of the closed tent. So you're not doubling the size of this tent or anything like that. So here's the inside of the GFC. Sorry for this light flare kind of streaming in, but you can probably tell 
the top is translucent. So that means this camper lets in a ton of light, which I love because I hate wasting my whole day when I'm out camping. I kind of like waking up with the sun. So I personally like the translucent top on this. Uh, most wedge campers are not translucent top. They're just, you know, the, the light coming in will come a little bit through the canvas and through the windows that you have open and stuff. This one has a door. I believe the current models have two doors on either side. So you can put a tent, you can put a ladder coming off the side. Those you can see. I have a ladder on the rear hatch, which is a pretty popular use case for, for these kind of tents. You can put like a big sticker, you can vinyl wrap this top section, or if you put a couple of solar panels, you can see down there the light isn't transmitting through. But this is basically the sleeping space you have in here. I typically sleep feet towards there, because if you sleep head towards there, you don't really have much headroom. But when you sleep head towards here, so you have tons of headroom over here so you can sit up just fine and if you're super short you could probably stand up as well so that's the inside pretty no nonsense a couple of pockets in the sides up front um, and the gfc particularly is a pretty streamlined thing so i have a little metal disc up there that i put an ipad so you can lay down here and put your ipad up there if you have a magnet on it and just kind of watch movies in bed which is what i like to do so very cool tent setup obviously i have the gfc but there are similar setups to that and then we have the iCamper sky camp mini now this was first introduced i believe on kickstarter as a full size so they have this longer so if you want to put this on top of an SUV, you could get uh, basically a king size bed out of it. This is around a full size bed inside of the mini. But the cool thing is that you have a hard shell tent essentially that fits over a short bed truck. Now this style tent is very unique in that, and I'll put links to all these tents down below in the video description. Um, the cool thing about this tent is it's a fold out tent, but setup is a breeze. You don't have to deal with zippers and canvas covers or anything like that because it has a hard shell, which closes with basically two latches. So you undo those latches, pop it up, and then this folds right out. And then you put the little rain fly guys in and you're good to go. Now this tent and this tent will do much better in the wind than this tent because we have some hard shell components on here. So this, that whole top is hard shell. This, this whole side is hard shell. So ideally, if the wind is coming this way, you set up like that. So the wind is blowing into the hard shell and that'll be your best bet for wind. With the wedge type, you want the wind blowing back this way. So the wind is basically blowing into the hard shell um, that'll be the best for win if you can orient yourself in that direction. Now, one little minor thing on the sky camps uh, and all eye campers actually, which is seems really minor, but is huge is these are actually angled. I'm not sure if any other tent manufacturers do it, but uh, eye campers, the only ladders that I've had like this. So if you're walking up and down this with in your bare feet or socks or super thin, flip-flops or something, this is gonna be by far the most comfortable ladder to go up and down. Also, it has incremental notches. So a lot of times you wanna get the right angle on your ladder. And if all you have to play with is this, it's not as good. Whereas I camper, you can kind of halfway close it to dial in exactly how long you want your ladder, which is awesome. Now in here, we have an actually insulated portion back there. Granted, it's, you know, just, just barely insulated but that's the hard shell side of it. So you'll basically have a skylight, windows on these two sides, and then a window obviously right here that I'm walking through. And this is the interior of that tent. Very comfortable, very spacious, and has windows where you kind of need them. Typically, if it's not raining heavily, uh, I won't pop the rain flies out on this side because, you know, I like to just be quick, but these rain flies do fold down and pop out similar to that. But the nice thing about the eye camper is if you don't want to set those up, it has a clear, and this isn't unique necessarily to the eye camper, but not every tent has it. it, has clear in here. So you could zip this up to something like that and still have a little ventilation off top and rain will typically not penetrate 
through there. So over there, you can see the interior gas struts and they come with little clamps you can put on that if there's like crazy wind, wind loads. But I've been camping in pretty windy weather and never really needed it. And then I keep this little uh, really thin, like, sorry for the light, memory foam topper in here. Uh, this is only on the upper body portion. So my kind of my knees down are just on the regular mattress, which isn't horrible, but not amazing either. So I kind of like that little memory foam mattress there as well. If I'm sleeping solo, I'll fold that up and have kind of a double thick. But if I'm with Ashley, then I'll lay it out like that. So that's that. Um, again, just a quick kind of, this is gonna be some repetitive information, but kind of a quick summary of everything we talked about. These will typically be low cost, except for a tent that I don't have, but GFC's new tent, the Super Light, is very cheap wedge camper. Not quite as nice as this one, but very cheap. But these styles will typically be the cheapest, and honestly, that's about the only pro that I can think of. But for those that are uh, money conscious or have a little bit of a tighter budget maybe. These still aren't super cheap, but cheaper than these. And if basically if you live in a climate that doesn't get cold or you don't mind spending five to 10 minutes to set up and take down, uh, but if you're going out you know, quickly, you gotta remember that set up and take down, sometimes you have to do twice because when you get back home, you wanna air out your tent and then close it back up. So it adds up and it's a pain, especially in cold weather. But not a bad tent, obviously. Doesn't do as well in the wind. Now the wedge style, they're gonna be the absolute quickest and easiest to set up and take down, which I absolutely love. The only bad part is if you have, you could probably do two, two adults and a small child, you know, like a, a very small child in there comfortably, or two adults and a dog would be no problem. But if you have much more than that, your wedge aren't gonna be the best bet because there's simply just not enough room. Now this is kind of best of both worlds, so to speak, because it takes up less roof space. You can also, some people put solar panels on top of this, which is nice. Um, and you get the hard shell benefits of easier setup and a little bit better in the wind. And again, they have two sizes. This is the mini which is about a full size bed roughly inside. And if you got the sky camp full, you know, it'd be about the same size as like a wedge camper, come to about here. And then you have a king size bed. So yeah, hopefully that was somewhat helpful. Uh, again, I have a lot of experience in, in all of these tents and as little, like as small of a detail as it sounds, having quicker and easier setup and takedown is huge, especially in the cold weather. Said it a bunch of times already, I know, but that's one thing to think about when I'm comparing these and you're just like, oh, well I can save, you know, however much money by getting that. And the only thing different is set up and take down and it doesn't do as good in the wind, but that is, it's something to consider. So I'll put some links down below for, for these, but again, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to pitch you on any of these manufacturers, but GFC, Awesome company, um, made in America out in Montana, cool dudes. I Camper is not a made in China tent like most of these other ones are. I Camper is a South Korean company. I'm half Korean if you're wondering, so I'm kind of stoked on that. South Korean company, you know, Samsung and all that stuff, not China. So it is different. Just because it's Asian doesn't mean it's Chinese. So just thing to think about. So yeah, I hope that was helpful as you kind of try and figure out your journey into maybe what kind of rooftop tent you're looking to buy. Um, because that's kind of what's been my experience using them. If you have any more thoughts, definitely leave them down below in the comments. Or if you have questions, I'll try and get those answered. Uh, but yeah, I think that, that about wraps it up. So until next time, guys, take care.
So also do keep in mind, this is on, you know, kind of like a mid height bed rack. So not even as tall as actually being on your roof. So this one, you got to kind of climb around up there and squeeze it down and buckle like 15 different buckles. So something to keep in mind.